So everybody, this is the final video on this channel about this car. The Volvo, my uh, 2004 Volvo XC70 has croaked. It has uh, died and undergone a significant mechanical failure. So I just wanted to provide one last update video. We've made uh, almost probably 10 videos on this car or something. Um, I've been driving this thing for almost four years now. This has been my daily driver. Um, it has over 230,000 miles. Um, you guys can see the car doesn't have any major cosmetic issues. Um, it's also stuck in this position because it can't really move right now. I'm going to explain everything right now. But I just wanted to talk about for 10-15 uh, minutes or so what this car, how this car has been over the years, I guess. One last final recap. And um, you guys can check out our other videos on the car if you want to know a little bit more on working on it and um, specific stuff that... Uh, all the specs and whatnot. We did a whole review back in the day. So, uh, yeah, I'll just get right into what has gone wrong. Okay, everybody. So, I'm going to start the car right now. The car still runs. I'm going to show you guys. Turns on. You can see the odometer. Um, there. It always has a red light because the door is open. I can close the door and get that beeping to go away. So, the car runs great. Um, started first crank right there. Um, you can see there's a check engine light on, but that's been on for a while. Um, and then you can see the ABS light, but that's been on for a while. Um, I think the ABS sensors have gone wrong, but I'm not going to fix any of that stuff right now because there is something severely wrong with the drivetrain. I'm going to put it in, took the e-brake off there, and we're going to put it into drive. Okay, and now I'm going to let off the brake pedal. If you guys can already hear something going on in the transmission. Oh, it's actually moving. So you can feel it rolling. Are we actually moving? Well, I don't want to move too much because it doesn't really actually drive anywhere. So um, this thing basically has major transmission problems. So I'm going to try to drive it right now. You guys can hear that. Oh boy. I'm just gonna roll down the hill here. But you guys can hear that this thing basically is not engaging. Um, the clutch packs seem to have exploded in this uh, transmission and this is just at coasting right now. So this is not like, now I'm on flat. I'm on the gas again. Oh, something picked up, some sensor, whatever. But yeah, the thing doesn't move. I'm on the gas drive, no brake, as you can see. It's cooked, and now I'm gonna put it into park. Ooh, that's not good. Basically, that's the parking pin in the automatic transmission trying to engage. Um, but due to uh, the transmission failure, it is not working. Okay, so what exactly has gone wrong? I said the transmission, obviously you guys could hear that noise. The transmission has had a major issue. Uh, I thought it maybe we were getting some comments. Uh, we posted a short that it could have been the front differential. Um, it's not the engine, obviously. The thing runs very smooth. Um, I thought the timing belt popped when it happened and I'll explain what happened. Basically, I was going to work, stopped at a red light, um, was waiting for the red light, turned green, let off the, the brake, I was in drive. And then this thing went boom, 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 and kind of this rumbling noise. I could hear some disengagement. Thing stopped moving, wouldn't go on gas, turned the car off, turned it back on, and then made it up about 200 yards up the road. It sounded terrible. I could tell that something was massively wrong with the car. Um, and then basically the thing wouldn't go anymore. So I was stuck on the side of the road, super close to my work. It was very terrible timing, quite frankly. Well, it was, actually, it was actually good. And then I got it towed back here at home. So uh, basically what has happened, I believe, um, I'm not a Volvo technician. I don't have any diagnostic tools. I haven't done anything to the car. I haven't taken it apart. It's all one piece. You guys just saw me roll it down the hill here. Um, but basically Cameron explained, Cameron is actually works in a dealership, Toyota dealership. I know that's not a Volvo dealership, but he has worked on these ASIN transmissions. And he said that that noise sounds like this is an ASIN transmission, by the way, that's the same thing in some Volvo, uh, in some Toyotas. Um, 
and basically likely what has happened is the clutch packs have disintegrated and given way and now that clutch pack material is all throughout the transmission they have these automatic transmissions have channels where the fluid flows and everything is pumped around to reach the solenoids and all the gear and everything it's it's complicated <laughs> but basically the torque converter cannot engage anymore is with the issue so the thing needs a new transmission it needs to be rebuilt um, or you can replace the transmission and it really sucks because you guys i just showed you guys the car is running and driving well and i'll go under the hood and talk about uh, some other issues real quick but basically it would be upwards of likely twenty five hundred dollars to get it rebuilt and a brand new transmission is like thirty six hundred dollars um the ones i found and then you can find some refurbished units you can buy another case online and the most unfortunate part is this thing had a brand new transmission at two hundred thousand miles so this is its second transmission i don't know if it's a refurbished unit or a rebuilt unit but it has given way about my odometer stopped working at 230,000 miles but that was a while ago and so i'm guessing this is probably probably about 240k right now is what it's actually sitting at because i've been driving things for some months with odometer uh not working um intermittently very intermittently very little and um so only about 40,000 miles on that transmission and it's already dead so um and it really sucks because this car is undrivable now it's not like oh the motor popped and you know you know exactly what's going on it's just kind of like sitting here running so it could totally be fixed the thing could totally be fixed but um yeah we'll get under the hood and i'm going to talk about some other issues so some of the issues under the hood currently is that the pcv or i think this is the back so this vacuum system here this thing has broken this little clip you can get a new um whole kit and you can replace a bunch of lines and i was about i was thinking of doing that I actually some work i had just done we just put out that brake video these are brand new rotors under there you can't really see them these wheels are pretty hiding but if you can see the pad you probably can't see the pad too great but yeah brand new pads and rotors on all four um this was about 320 bucks i just threw at the car just in that and then i was actually going to do a transmission flush funny enough because i could tell it's probably overdue um like i said there was no there was no sh slipping shifts or gear shit like slipping or anything but i could tell the shifts were a little bit clunkier than normal so i figured oh it's getting low on fluid I, I the thing the thing is when you look at the transmission it's not leaking severely at all there's no leak on the transmission actually the diff on this car was leaking so i thought oh maybe it was the diff but that is not a diff issue that it would be like you would you would hear like oh the gear the bevel gear is exploded or something has gone in the diff where it's not engaging at all or it's engaged but it basically has nothing to grab onto so the transmission is toasted um but yeah i bought like transmission fluid for like 80 bucks um so yeah, about $400 in parts that I just threw at this car and I didn't even get to drive it for more than a couple weeks after that. Um, but uh, I still have the transmission fluid. Oh yeah, and I just did an oil change literally, I think two days before this happened. So yeah, that's another like 70 bucks. So I spent almost 500 bucks on this car. Um, kind of a bummer um, for it to just take a crapper. But under the hood, uh, this thing, if you guys can see here, the last timing belt is way overdue that's my fault guys um but it, it hasn't propped so that's not the actual issue but you can see this thing is basically at another 120,000 miles without a timing belt change that's quite a bit overdue some things suggest like 60k 80k but i really should have changed it a while ago um so the thing does need a timing belt for sure it has the abs light issue which i believe is abs sensors i just didn't get around to do it i was very close i was about to purchase the parts like the next day but um also this motor mount that i replaced like literally two years ago is already cracked uh just that was my fault for buying a crappy um non-oe motor mount that wasn't super nice but basically under the hood i mean the car uh, definitely burns a little bit of oil um when i changed the oil the thing had drank down like two or three quarts it was pretty low it was pretty bad it did not knock ever it didn't get ticky this motor has been fantastic i have to say the car has been fantastically reliable has never left me stranded or anything until this happened with the transmission unfortunately i can't really show you guys can see there's the transmission down there it's a transverse mount of motors mount on the side right there but you can see the case is pretty shiny that's because this thing was actually replaced i think it's just a refurbished unit to be honest with you that's what i'm guessing or a rebuilt unit but basically i was looking into it and these things if it's really crispy with the mileage that this one is on the interior is great um actually it's in great shape and cosmetically there's definitely some dings and everything and it's not even clean right now and it looks pretty good right um no major cosmetic issues or anything 
just those other mechanical issues I was kind of working on. So if everything was like done up and I had, I would have had to sink, you know, between the time belt parts and the water pump and everything, that would have been like 350 bucks for that kit if I did it for myself and we would have made some videos on that. But basically would have thrown probably another close to $1,000 without this whole transmission thing into it. Not to mention it needs new front tires because they bought these crappy tires, um, which I'm glad I guess I didn't change them before <laughs> before this happened because that would really suck. That'd be a big expense, but thing needs tires and um, all this work, the timing belt and then the PCV uh, system and then uh, the ABS issue. So it definitely needs some work. So there would be like $1,500 probably need to be spent already on the car. Also needs a new taillight, it's cracked and it leaks. Um, and then this happened. So these things are only worth probably like $3,500 in the shape that this thing is in with the miles um, as far as if I had thrown another 1500 bucks at it. So, you know, that's not exactly a great return cost. Um, it has been a fantastic car, I have to say, and I've really actually enjoyed driving it. Um, but now it's mechanically totaled. The reality is uh, because the cheapest way of going about and fixing this transmission would likely be probably $2,500, I'm guessing, to um get this thing you buy the parts and then you get it rebuilt and you get it put in by somebody else um i'm not going to be doing that no doubt um i just don't see the value in that and i'm driving something else now we had another family car thankfully um so i will be listing this thing for sale um for sure if you guys live in southwest washington and you want a project but the thing is i it really sucks because you could see it. It's a solid car. The car has a super clean record title, no big accidents or nothing. Um, I haven't ran into anything and it's brand new brakes on it and everything. It, it's really kind of a bummer that this happened because it's not something that insurance can cover uh, unless you have one of those like car part insurance things. But yeah, it's kind of a bummer. So my final conclusion about this car after the big transmission uh, blowout basically and it being uh, now needing a total mechanic special uh, and being to be pulled away on a trailer um, is that really you probably shouldn't buy one of these um, compared to like a if you just need a just a daily driver car you can go get yourself a Honda Accord a Toyota Camry for three thousand dollars or Lexus ES 300 I would say as far as early 2000s cars go do that just go do that um, they don't, they're not probably going to have catastrophic failures as long as they've been taken care of a decent amount. And they're just super plentiful. Parts are very cheap. The parts aren't bad on this thing, but, you know, I have replaced other things on the car. I replaced a window regulator clip. I replaced the blower motor right when I got the car. Um, about literally four, it was November. Yeah, I remember it was like I could not defrost the car and it was just ice on the windshield. I was working a swing shift job in the middle of the night and it was terrible. So I had to replace that. Um, other things I did, yeah, I think, that, I mean, just maintenance. I, I maintenance the car well, actually, as far as oil changes, I changed the car oil every 3,500 miles. So, um, and I had to do that really because it was burning oil, which is not a good thing. So I would say probably don't buy one of these cars. There is better options for $3,000 or so. Now that's where you could, you know, the thing is the all wheel drive aspect and the wagon aspect, I would say that really a Subaru probably is going to be pretty similar in possible maintenance costs. Those things have big issues as far as outbacks and the all wheel drive on this thing has been fantastic. I drove it in the snow several times. It was great. Um, and I really do love the car for what it is or for what it is at the price point and the issue that it now has, it is no longer viable to try to fix it and drive it. So, um, the Volvo is going away. It's kind of sad. Um, a bit of a bummer but yeah this thing is going to be for sale and if you love volvos and the thing is you could totally make this thing a really great car and you're just into volvos i could see how somebody would want this thing still totally it's a great i i definitely prefer the experience of driving it over an accord or a camry or just other common daily driver cars i mean this is not a super common car but um it's a nice car for sure and i'm gonna miss it not gonna lie um super practical been super awesome but yeah it's it's dead and i i'm gonna say really to be honest don't don't buy one of these um if you're looking for your first car um especially with a lot of miles these transmissions are bad um they go bad in a lot of them um, i know someone else that has one that has a bad gear and slipping so they can't drive it anymore so uh 
that's kind of the final send off on the Volvo. And uh, yeah, check out our other videos on it if you own one of these. Um, but yeah, just be forewarned, change your transmission fluid, check up the health on that thing. Um, I don't think that was my fault. I think that that was just a catastrophic. It was just went from working well and then just boom, just dead. So it wasn't really like, oh, okay, we need to nurse it and then fix it or anything. Or it wasn't like, oh, it's really wearing out. So it's really a bummer, but um, thank you guys for checking out the video and check out our other Volvo videos.